Welcome to Transformative Principle, where I help you stop putting out fires and start leading. I am your host, Jethro Jones. You can follow me on Twitter at Jethro Jones. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Morning, Jethro. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you this morning? We remember we said we're going to get on and just start recording. I was thinking about the episodes that I've done. I'm I'm still pretty nervous, so I like talk to them and like tell them before I push record and make sure I hear the little ding. But yeah, yeah, and that's good too. That's what I typically do. But for us, I want to I want to get as much raw in there as possible because I think that's what's going to make it compelling. To be honest. Yep. Well, I told you on the phone or Zoom, I don't remember how we were talking or maybe just texting you, but <laughs> your uh, your strategy the last session when we recorded um, about getting I, like a morning lap in uh-huh. and be proactive and not make people feel like they got to come find you or is the principal here today? I've put that on my calendar every morning and it's been awesome. That's great. How but, has it been awesome? Like. What do you mean when you say it's been awesome? What has been awesome about it? Well, it's been a good proactive strategy, but not in the way that I thought. So when you were explaining it to me, I was thinking, you know, the same few staff seem to have a lot of questions or need help or guidance or whatever. And so I thought going up and doing a lap and being visible in the whole school first thing would would have a lot of conversations with those few staff, but the opposite has happened. So I've realized or just noticed things or asked um, staff questions and it's the opposite kind of people. They never come down and ask for help. They never email questions. And so it's helped me like connect with them and notice like, oh, you don't have enough chairs in this class, you know, and the teacher, Like, I don't know how long it'd been. They're like, oh yeah, well, a couple of them broke and maintenance said we don't have any more. And and I'm like, okay, we got to fix that. I'm glad I I asked today. And so it's helped me kind of problem solve and and figure out a couple of things with staff that I just know they would never ask. So that made me feel good. Like I'm trying to solve some problems and help people. You know, that was kind of the whole idea, but it's not with the same people I expected. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's a neat uh, side effect that those who aren't getting the support are coming to you for support because you're going to them. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, some of it, it's real small, simple stuff, but like I would never have noticed there was a contracted service person in our library working with a student. And I'm, I go in there and I'm like, you know, good morning. And I introduce myself because I didn't recognize him. And I asked, I'm like, is this where you're supposed to do your services with students as in the middle of the library? She's like, well, no, but my keys don't work to the room I used to use. <laughs> you know, and she didn't, she didn't say anything. So I'm like, we can fix that. We'll get you a key. We'll, so yeah. that's why I've really felt like it's been a good strategy for me to do every day. That's good. So you're still doing it every day? Yes. Good. First thing. And and is there other, are there ever other things that come up that prevent you from being successful at doing it? Sometimes if there's something like before school or right at the first bell that happens, I've been a, few, a couple minutes late, but still in that first block of time in the morning, I've always been able to get up there. Mm-hmm. So then the other question that we talked about last time is this preventing problems from coming to you that were distracting you from getting other things done. Tell me about that. Well... You know, the people that feel like, well, I didn't see you today or I didn't know you were here that end up coming down like when they get a break or lunch or after school has definitely that the number of times that happens has gone down. But I think a lot of times it's kind of a psychological thing, like when when people just see the building administrators like going around being visible, they don't have like something urgent, obviously, every day they need, but they're just kind of reassured like, oh, people are here. You know, yeah. buses are running on time, kind of, kind of thing. So yeah, they are reassured. I think that is such a powerful statement that solves a lot of other problems that we don't even think about. So the other things that we talked about was um, 
being late to meetings and meetings going long. And so we talked about the strategy of adding 15 to 30 minutes to a meeting. Have you had to do that or have you found that you haven't needed to? What's been your experience with that? I I have and stuff that I know, like the the pre-scheduled stuff that you know is going to happen. Um, but what I've started doing is, you know, if something comes up with a student staff or parent issue um, and I and I have to be somewhere like an IEP or a you know, one of those pre-scheduled things, I've just had to tell people like, hey, I'm sorry, I gotta, I've got to be somewhere I, you know, committed to being, and if there's more that we need to do to address this, please send me an email and let me know when we can meet, but I don't think that's really been the culture here. It's kind of like, well, you know, when things come up, you just kind of deal with them, and then you don't end up being where you're, where you need to be. Yeah. So, yeah. So have you found then, it sounds like what you're saying is that you have found your voice a little bit yourself and been able to say here, I I need to leave and been more assertive, I guess, and saying, I can't stay any longer. I need to go to my next meeting. Do you feel like that's the case? Yeah. And it's self-inflicted. I think a lot of the stuff early on as a new building principal is people expect you to be exactly like your predecessor the good and the bad right yeah. and so you know people like even students have come in and just said well i used to just you know come in here when i didn't want to go to class yeah. and hang out i'm like nope go to class but even just little things like well the principal just always was what making small talk and always made it a priority to you know have conversations which is important, you know, but sometimes not as important as other things that have to happen. So I was trying to, you know, respect that and kind of understand the culture, I guess, of, you know, what people expect out of me. And it's like, you know, at a certain point, that's self-inflicted if I don't say something. And yeah. when people ask me as I'm walking to a meeting or to somewhere I have to be, if they're like, hey, can you come help us with this? Or can I invite you to that my answer is i'd love to say yes to this but i can't say no to my meeting or this iep and then people i think understand because you know they just see see you walking around and they're like oh he's just walking around yeah and they don't realize like <laughs> oh i'm going to deal with a, a, a safety issue or an urgent issue or uh whatever yeah so as a as a quick side note i was in an elementary school my first administrative position and the the culture there was for principals to run whenever there was a problem. And we even had this thing called an owl squad that you ha you called an owl squad when you needed support because a kid was acting out or doing something dangerous or whatever. And so everybody who was on the owl squad would run to that place, literally run. And I got there and saw that happening and said, I am not going to run anywhere. Like, I'm not going to run to an event. There's got to be like a real, real bad thing for me to run to it. And even then, I probably don't even need to run. So I just said I'm not going to run. And I stopped. And so I would be walking somewhere, like really going to a kid who's like throwing desks and stuff, and a teacher would stop me and say, hey, can I grab you for a second? And I'd be like, I can't. I'm on my way to deal with this situation, but I'll swing back and, and touch base with you. And then they, uh, after I did that for a while, people would start saying things like, I didn't realize what you were going to do, but I heard about it from the teacher and I can't believe you were so calm <laughs> about that situation. <laughs> and, and what that did is that put everybody else at ease because when you see an administrator running through the hall to something, that makes you get amped up yourself and think there must be something big going down and I must not be safe if that's going on. And, and it really very quickly calm down the whole school just for me refusing to run someplace. And that's a little thing and it's not that big a deal, but it seemed like a really big deal to people. And I, I think that's what you're saying also that people are starting to see that things do matter, that you do have a plan and you are going places. Yeah. And that exact same expectation was in place here and it was something that a staff member before the year was like, oh, well, I hope you know, are you and your, the new assistant principal, are you guys ready to, you know, run around and chase kids? And they weren't joking. They were being literal. Like, are you ready to sprint down the hall? And 
I said, well, shoot, I don't know like the nature of what's gone on in the school, but I'm, I'm not someone who runs anywhere. And, you know, just like you, like Todd Whitaker, I think is the one who talks about when the principal sneezes, everybody catches a cold. Yeah. And I remember a school I used to work in, someone with hard soled shoes would come clacking down the tile outside my door. And you could tell like they were stressed and anxious and it stressed yeah. me out just hearing. Yeah. Sort of like basically running down the hall. Yeah. Yep. So, the pitter patter or the uh, sometimes women who wear heels make a distinctive noise and you know, a certain person is coming down the hall and, uh, and that's a real thing. And like everybody feels that. So it's not, it's not just you. So speaking of that type of thing, our other thing that we talked about was when people are upset, making sure they feel heard. How has that been over the last month? I wouldn't say it's been better or worse. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. The, the strategy that we talked about was saying something like, you seem upset. When's the best time to contact you when we're ready to deal with this? Any, any feedback on that? We were talking specifically about parent concerns, I believe, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what I did at, and I think this also 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 is like an ingrained thing in the culture here is, you know, a lot of times when parents are frustrated, they just want to feel heard and they want someone to acknowledge, you know, their concern. And so like a, a student came home and reported something to their parent recently, and then the parent reported it. And one comment the parent made was like, well, you know, I just always wonder if things like this will get addressed or just swept under the rug. And so I've, I've tried to make sure, like in that situation, I followed up with the parent and the student and said like, hey, I really appreciate you re reporting that so that we could look into it and make sure everything was okay. Thank you so much. And, you know, you can never go into details about, well, what'd you do or what consequences were issued or anything like that. But I think I think just telling the student and the parent that they appreciate like, oh, it got to you and you know about it and you looked into it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I've done is, you know, when I've gotten some pretty lengthy emails um, with people that are frustrated or upset, I just have an auto. It used to be called canned responses in Gmail yeah. where you can save an email that you type over and over. And it just says, thank you for um, letting me know about your concerns or questions, please let me know a time that we can meet in person or talk on the phone. And that's how I respond to those. Um, I just had to make it, you know, having a new email. I'm like, that's how you respond to those. You don't get in an email war and then, you know, emails create more problems than they solve. Yeah. And it's been interesting how few of responses I've gotten, gotten from, you know, people that send an email like that. They don't want to talk on the phone or have a meeting. Yeah. And I think that is a great strategy, by the way, just brilliant to say, to not ever have to think about what your response is going to be because it doesn't matter. And you have made the choice that you want those conversations to be on phone or in person. And that's what I think really matters. And I, a lot of times people send those messages because they're frustrated and upset and don't actually want anything done, but just want to vent. And that's a great opportunity for you to just say, here's an opportunity for you to, to talk to me. And if you don't want to, like, it's not on me to chase you down and force you to tell me what's going on. It's on you to say, here's when I'm available. Yeah. And even though we all know not to take things like that personally, when you, when staff, you know, even one of our other staff members who's not a principal got one the other day. You know, it stresses them out. It bugs them. It keeps them up at night. They get angry. Their their first reaction is to fire an email back and get mm -hmm. defensive and justify. So doing the auto response, you know, people know you read it, but you also don't have to sit there and and waste time and energy yeah. thinking what if and oh my goodness, because the people who want something addressed, like they want something done, they'll call or they'll come in. And the ones that just want to vent, that's fine. But I'm not going to let that be a black cloud that hangs over myself or somebody else. So get it out yeah. of your inbox. Don't worry about it. 
Yeah, and by setting up a canned response, you already know what you're going to say. You don't have to think about it again. You just click the button that says, here it is. That's that's really good. Here's the other Here's the other tip for those. Yeah, let's hear it. Because the, when it happened to a staff member, then someone, usually the parent, will, I call it, you know, tell on, uh, tell mom and dad on you where they CC your supervisor. Mm -hmm. So then the parent like CC'd me and the assistant principal. So I'm reading through this email chain and I told the staff member, I'm like, hey, I know when you read those and you want to email back, um, you know, don't respond at length. Do a quick response asking for a phone or a face to face. But the other thing is when you type those out, schedule them to go out at the end of the day or first thing the next morning, because when parents send you one at 1015 in the middle of the day and you respond at 1017, they know they got you. And then they're going to respond at 1019 and you respond at 1021. And like, we all have a rule with coaches and parents 24 hours before you ask for a meeting, you don't confront a coach after the game or in the locker room. Why isn't it the same with classroom or school stuff? Let it, it can wait till the end of the day or the next morning. Yeah, that that's a great strategy too. And most, most at all school accounts have a built-in scheduled send later. And if not, like most schools are using Gmail, I think. And so if not, then there are other ways to, to pull that in or to, you know, put that response in and then send it later. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely a good strategy. Boomerang. So, Boomerang is yeah. a good one. Yeah, for sure. So I've been dying to ask you, you opened up the fishbowl. Tell me your thoughts. Last time we talked, you had covers up and now oh. I can see through your windows behind you. What are you thinking? <laughs> there, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are 12 window panes of glass in this office, mm -hmm. which means to pull the shades up or down, it takes me like five minutes to pull all 12 yeah. up or down. So like if someone comes in upset, it's really awkward to be like, I'm going to close all 12 of these blinds. <laughs> so what I was doing is like when they first got installed, I left them down uh -huh. and I never put them up because it takes so long. So this weekend, honestly, I was in here and trying to get some natural light. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, like though that wall is open, but the other two walls, they're pulled shut. Okay. So. And I think honestly, that's a good strategy that you can, you can close one set of drapes easier and give people some privacy, but having to close all 12, that does take a while, especially yeah. if they're those, those kind that you have to like twist the thing. And then it takes like 30 seconds to twist it. And for each pain, that can be a while. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you just sit there and keep crying. Can I bring up a new topic for today? Yes, please. I'm your, ready. Your, your wisdom on. So I've sensed this a little bit um, in bits and pieces as I've come in new that, you know, I was kind of joking with one of our staff members who told me like, hey, you know, we've had, we've been through a lot of administrators and administrators kind of come and go. So are you, you know, why are you here? Are you trying to like build your resume and go and work your way into a bigger district or a bigger school? And so him and I were talking the other day, I made the joke. I said, I kind of feel like everybody's stepdad, like, oh, well, how long are you going to be here? Uh -huh. The last guy didn't make it till Christmas. Some teachers that I was spending some time with last week, we had a good, honest conversation about that. And they said, they're like, well, you know, the staff really wants to wait and see that you're invested in us and you're going to be here for the long term before we put in time and effort to you know, things you ask us to do or changes you want to see in the school or the district's big initiative with PLCs and being collaborative and focusing on data. Like that's a lot of work. And so we're kind of, we kind of want to wait and see, like, I don't know, maybe two or three years in, if you're invested and you're here, we'll, we'll get on board. And I asked them, I'm like, this is going to sound really rude, but I got to be honest. Do you think that's part of the reason why you've gone through administrators? Mm -hmm. If you're waiting to see that they're committed like multiple years before you're willing to do anything. Does that make them want to stay? Great question. And if we don't do anything different for two to three years, besides a run around and put out fires, how much better is our school going to be two or three years from now when we finally decide to, you know, put in our best effort on things we know we need to change. And so 
it was a good conversation and I appreciated them being honest with me. Like, Hey, that's how a lot of us feel. And I always want to, you know, respond honestly, but you can't, you can't make promises. You know, like I told them jokingly, I'm like, guys, principals are on a year to year contract and not tenured or, you know, they're easier to get rid of than teachers. So I can't, I can't like bring you this document that says I signed a five-year deal like they do in the NFL or some yeah. superintendents do. Um, you know, I can't, I can't show you that or, or promise that other than what they see just, you know, as you start coming in new, but what are some ways that you, you would try and get staff to see past that or not have that be an issue that holds our school back yeah well number one kudos for the honesty from them to you and you to them i think that was a great question to ask them uh just to get them to be self-reflective themselves and see if maybe they're contributing to the turnover and i think it's an appropriate thing to ask because there are multiple things that go into why someone leaves or why there's turnover in a district and it's totally fine for you to be asking those questions. Um, I mean, I think another question to ask is, why are you running principles out? I mean, I wouldn't probably phrase it just like that, but that could be a perception, right? And if they're being honest saying, we're not going to commit to anything until you prove yourself and show us that you're going to be here, um, it's appropriate also to say, well, why are you running principles out? Because that's what it seems like. And you know, it's okay to have those honest conversations. I don't think that's the most productive route to go, but I think you're starting down the right path of, of having honest conversations, which is the productive way to go. The second thing that I would say is like, what are we here for in the school? What are you here for as a teacher in the school? And if you are not going to do what is best for kids, because it comes from me and I say to do it, uh, until I prove myself, why are you even here at school? Like, why do you have this job? That doesn't make any sense. And I think with your approach and what I know about you, you already are someone who, who, who has what's best for kids at heart, and that's what you try to do from what I have seen of you, from knowing you for these two years or so. And... And so I think that is something that you can certainly lead with. What are you doing here if you're not going to do the right thing for kids just to spite me as the leader? Because that's really what it comes down to, right? We're not going to do what you say until you're committed. Well, that's just because of me. And and what? why are you here then if that's what your focus is? What do you think of that approach? I think that's good. And, you know, you're you're right when there's things like our district's initiative with PLCs, it's it's not something staff should do because an administrator is asking them. Yeah. Like with with change and in initiatives in schools, if it makes sense and it's good for kids, that's why we should do it. Not it's not a like this favor where, hey, I ask you to do something, I expect you to do it. Yeah. No. Um I try really hard to not overload people with 10 new initiatives at the same time. I know that's a recipe for disaster. So if we're going to make a focus on this, it should be something we do our homework on, we research, we see and understand like, wow, that's good for kids. And the reason we're doing it is kids deserve our best. That's why we're here. I just, I did when that conversation happened the other day, I didn't, I hadn't really thought through that. I've been like in my own mind and talking with some other new staff, like my assistant principal is new, like, oh man, you know, we got to work on this. And some of that's just building trust and it'll come, come with time, but it's pretty deep seated. Like we're going to sit, we're going to sit back and wait and see, see if you're invested before we're deciding if we're on your bus or not. Yeah. And, and to me, that sounds like a very selfish way to do things. And I'm not saying selfish in a judgmental way. I'm saying that in a statement of fact, a matter of fact way, that you're deciding to not do things just because the principal is telling you to do it because you don't believe that they're going to be there for a while. 
that is really just thinking about yourself. That's not thinking about why we could be making some changes, why we could be changing how we're doing things. Mm -hmm. It's it's really just thinking about I'm going to be stubborn and selfish in my actions and not do anything remotely uncomfortable until this guy has somehow proved to me that he's going to be there. And what would that look like anyway? You know, <laughs> that's that's the other thing is what would that look like for them to be committed to you? And it, it's not going to be a time frame issue. It's going to be a culture issue, yeah. right? That's what it's going to come back to. They need to trust that you are that you are in it for the long term and no amount of I'm going to be here for X years is ever going to solve that. It's going to be how you act on a day to day basis. Yeah. And it's not like staff here are totally digging their heels in saying, well, I'm not doing anything you ask. I, I, I think the way I've sensed it is like, you know, we'll comply and we'll kind of, you know, we'll, we'll look into that with you and kind of see what we think. But I guess what I was hearing from them is like, we'll really get on board and throw our support behind this change or behind you uh, being a good fit for our school after we see that you're committed. And, yeah. you know, part of me just feels bad. I told our assistant principal, there's some of some of the staff that have been here for a long time and been through that. I feel bad for them. And I honestly want to just give them a hug and say, I'm sorry that, you know, people just left on on bad terms or like one staff member told me and I'm, I'm glad they did. They're like, Hey, Eric, don't ever get on the intercom and say all staff come down to the uh, library for a quick meeting at the end of the day. And I kind of laughed. I'm like, why would I not do that? Like sometimes principals do that. And they said, this isn't funny. This is sad, but they said, well, because that's how the last couple of principals have quit. And wow. even last year, like one principal got on the intercom and said, Hey, all staff, quick meeting and shared that, you know, they were leaving. Well, then they have another staff meeting after school to name a new principal. And then the last week of school, that principal calls, Hey, quick meeting after school and says, I'm leaving. So like three of them in a matter of months last year. And I just feel bad that like, yeah, buzz in the intercom. It's literally like a, a, a trauma trigger, a stressor, mm -hmm. like, that the people that have been here are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. I think I told you someone came in my office the second week of school and they're like, oh my God, are you quitting? Are you leaving us? And I'm like, this is a Monday morning, first thing. <laughs> I'm like, what? What are you talking? Did you, is there something in the paper I don't know about? They're like, no, your desk is all clean. It looks like you're packing up. I was like, I try and have my desk clean at the start of the week. Like, <laughs> I'm so sorry that made you think I'm leaving just because yeah. the desktop was empty. Yeah. So, so when, when you think about why they're saying the things they're saying, it's really because there's a lack of trust there, right? Yeah. And they don't trust that you're going to stick around. They are triggered by these experiences that they've had, which is all completely understandable and very sad because they're, they've seen a pattern, right? So I think there are a couple of different things you can do. One, you can disrupt the pattern that you can call everybody down to a meeting, even though this teacher said don't do this, but you can start to change what that looks like. Everybody come down. We're going to have a meeting and we're going to do some. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's <Have a> right. <laughs> That's exactly. a great idea. And, oh. and just to say, look, I know this has been a difficult thing in the past. I am not going to tell you that I'm going to leave by – doing this, calling everybody down to do this. Like when I am, when I'm going to leave, because we're all going to leave at some point, here is how I'm going to let you know that I'm going to leave. I'm going to schedule a meeting before school on a specific day or after school on a specific day. And you're going to have at least 24 hours notice. And I'm going to talk to the superintendent and say, if I get fired, this is how it has to happen. We need to give them 24 hours notice in a calendar invite, blah, 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 whatever you need to do. And and say it up front. When somebody leaves, this is how we're going to deal with it, and this is how we're going to manage it. And so then when a teacher leaves or a secretary leaves or a custodian leaves or a paraprofessional leaves or a contracted person leaves, 
we can have a specific way that we announce that somebody is leaving, which, by the way, should be a respectful, appropriate way to honor what that person has done, even if they go out on bad terms. You should still be able to say, here's what's going on, this person's leaving, and this is where they're going. And if even if it's a negative thing, everybody still deserves to know they're leaving because of a negative thing. We can't divulge all the details, but it's it's very sad that this happened. We're heartbroken, it's tough, and we love them as a human being, and it's sad that they have to leave in this manner or whatever. And, you know, if if everybody knows that's how it's going to happen, that there's going to be clarity and transparency as much as is respectful and appropriate, then those things should be should be in place and you should be able to talk about them beforehand rather than having people be surprised. So they know when they get an email saying somebody's leaving, then then they know what the process is. They know how they're going to go through it and I think that would be a way to, you know, cancel out that thing. So that was actually two things. Number 1, jam up the narrative and say we're going to come down and have a meeting and it's going to be something positive so that you start seeing that this is not the case. And number two, uh, we're going to make a process for how people exit our building because there's been this collective trauma around that. And it's worthwhile to just call it out and say, this is unfortunate. You guys should not have been treated this way. Nobody's at fault. I'm not blaming anybody, but it's not good for you to, to hear things in that way. So we're going to set up a process of how we how we say goodbye to people. What do you think about those two ideas? I think it's a great idea. I, I I thought about that a little bit. I'm like, well, if it's my first quarter of the year and I'm planning my exit strategy, that's kind of reinforcing the narrative. And so I dropped it. I'm like, what? Well, I'm not going to tell them like, hey, someday when I do leave, this is how I'll do it. But I think you're right. Um, and that's a sign of, you know, just the environment they've been in. You know, yeah. they're just in a condition that, oh, did you see that kind of cryptic email? I wonder what this is about. I wonder if it's because they're leaving or they are quitting or, you know, and I, I guess I've never had those kind of experiences or I, I don't usually have that response when I see stuff like that. I'm like, well, I don't know if it's bad. I guess we'll find out when we get there, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, but like being a new principal, you can't have a breakdown every time your superintendent emails you or texts you and says, Hey, I need to talk to you. Yeah. It's like being a kid and getting called to the principal's office, like get over yeah. it. And, and that stigma exists for a reason because so many people have been called to the principal's office and gotten in trouble. And you know, that's something that you, I know you've worked on in previous schools is to make that, that culture one that is more exciting and happy and, and positive focused and mm -hmm. you know with your with your prizes that you gave out with your weird stuffed animals that <laughs> was, <laughs> that I think is a good way to start some of those things happening and and implement some of those same strategies not the exact same thing but have some strategies and that could be how you do that first meeting that that it's that celebration that you that you've done with your stuffed animals and I think that there's there's a way for you to change the narrative and a way for you to put people's fear at ease. You know, like if, if something super tragic happens and you need to leave right away, then you're going to leave right away. And sorry, but that's, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But even if that happens, you can like, no matter what you can say to the superintendent, wait 24 hours, give them a calendar invite and, this is how it needs to happen. And I talk with the superintendent about that too and say, look, because of this stuff, we've got to do something different. So here's what I need from you, a commitment. If you get sick of me and you want to fire me, that's totally fine. But if you do that, this is how you need to let the staff know because this is what we've, what I've told them is going to happen. And I need to be a man of my word and I'm asking you to, to have enough respect for me now as the current principal to carry it out in this manner. And you know, even if you died in an accident and everybody knew he could wait 24 hours and fulfill your wishes and do it in that manner. And yeah. honestly, we don't want that to happen. Hope it doesn't. But 
still, that's a way that you could start to, to, to build some trust right away. And you are going to leave at some point, and so are all of your teachers. Yeah. Like, this is not an eternal life sentence of you being in this school. Careers exist, right? <laughs> and people are going to move, and people are eventually are going to retire. So setting that expectation early on is not a bad thing. And just saying, look, because you've had a difficult time, here's why I'm going to do it. I yeah. think that's and appropriate. I, I think I underestimated how much of a challenge that would be for me because in my mind, um, and I talked about this in my interview, like I've been in the same district my entire career from first year teacher to middle school principal, 13 years, same town, same district. I got transferred um, sometimes against my will to like different positions, you know, hey, come help out with this. Hey, start an alternative school, whatever. But I, I just assumed like people would look into your kind of your work history and your resume and clearly tell like he's not an island hopper because you see those resumes like every two years they they leave, they move. There's red flags here. And I've, I felt like more people would know just kind of know that about me. And, you know, they either didn't look or um, it doesn't really matter you know, if I tell them, like, I don't want to go to a big district. That's my worst nightmare. I told one teacher, you know, my twin is at the biggest high school in Wyoming, 20 miles away. And they're like, oh, how long till you want to be an administrator at his school? I was like, guys, you couldn't pay me a million (laughs) dollars tax-free to be an administrator in a school of 2,500 kids. I wouldn't do it. It's my worst nightmare. No way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not who you are. Yeah, but that, like just hearing that from someone, especially who's new, that doesn't do anything to disrupt the pattern and build trust like you talked about. So. Right, yeah. And and with all these problems, that's what we really have to get to. What are the issues that are underlying the the actions that they're taking? Why are they taking those? And most of the time, it has something to do with culture and with trust. And those things just matter a lot. And... And you've got to be able to bring those in and say, here's how I'm combating your lack of trust and your lack of a good culture here. I'm looking for something I want to show you on the screen. <laughs> Is it I'm the so speed glad. of trust? <laughs> I'm so glad. Well, that oh, yeah. Too. But you made us read this last year, which my school counselor and I talked a lot about with like helping teachers look at trauma through that lens but that's really in my brain as things have come up like don't give out an all call and ask for a staff meeting after school what i'm thinking is man what happened to you not not what's wrong with you why would that make you stressed out i'm like what happened and usually like in all these cases i've asked staff like why is that why is that an issue you know for people here and they're like well because of this experience so it really is the same same lens like man what happened to you yeah and for everybody listening i'm putting that book what happened to you a link to it in the show notes because it really does help a lot to understand what is why people are acting the way that they are and what has led to that so okay i think uh we got some good stuff um we'll follow up on those things in our next uh chat next month and i'm looking forward to it so Thanks again, Eric. This was this was good. I'm glad we're doing this. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. The next time they play, we'll have to put a bet on BYU Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that they're ever gonna play again. I hope they do, but we had a we had some deals, but they they've fallen through. So I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah. I I think you'd look good in a Notre Dame shirt. That's the same color, blue and gold, kind of right. <laughs> yeah, blue and gold, blue and white. It's pretty close. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks, Jethro. Have a, have a great week, man. Appreciate your help and your time today. Thank you. Have a good one.